हेलो एवरी वन टूडेज डिसेक्शन टॉपिक इज इंगवाइनल केनाल इंगवाइनल केनाल इज सीच्युएटेड इन द इंगवाइनल रिजियन इंगवाइनल रिजियन इज द एरिया विच इज सीच्युएटेड बिट्वीन द एंटीरियर एबडोमिनल वॉल एंड फ्रंट ऑफ थाई सो दीस एरिया दीस रिजियन इज कॉल्ड एज इंगवाइनल रिजियन एंड इंगवाइनल केनाल it is the musculo aponeurotic tunnel situated in the medial part of this inguinal region before going into detail of inguinal canal just see few surface landmarks so see this one is the anterior superior iliac spine here is the pubic tubercle so inguinal ligament is attached to from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle then another one is the mid inguinal point so mid inguinal point is the mid point of line joining the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis so this is the pubic symphysis so mid point of this pubic symphysis and anterior superior iliac spine this is called as called as mid inguinal point inguinal canal is situated above and parallel to the medial half of inguinal ligament so this is the site for inguinal ligament so uh, above and medial half of the inguinal ligament this area is for the inguinal canal now it extends from the deep inguinal ring deep inguinal ring is situated 1.25 cm above the mid inguinal point so here is the site for the deep inguinal ring and superficial inguinal ring uh, which is situated just above and lateral to the pubic crest so here is the site for the superficial inguinal ring so this much of area is the site for the inguinal canal uh, this is the right side of anterior abdominal wall so boundaries of inguinal canal are anterior wall posterior wall roof floor inlet and outlet so Uh, we are reflecting the anterior wall which is formed by skin first layer is the skin then second layer that is the superficial fascia so you can see second layer that is the superficial fascia and third layer that is in whole extent the inguinal canal is uh, Uh, in the anterior wall there is the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle so see this one is the external oblique muscle and this is the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle so in the whole length anterior wall is formed by the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle and behind this aponeurosis there is in the lateral one third Uh, there are the fleshy fibers of internal oblique muscle so in the anterior wall skin superficial fascia aponeurosis of external oblique and in the lateral one third the fleshy fibers of internal oblique muscle see this is the internal oblique muscle so the uh, fibers of internal oblique muscle which has origin from the lateral two third of the uh, inguinal ligament they are going to form the uh, anterior wall of the inguinal canal now see this is the external oblique muscle this one is the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle on the uh, medial side this aponeurosis of external oblique muscle shows one triangular opening that triangular opening is situated just above and lateral to the pubic crest this opening is called as superficial inguinal ring so this triangular gap has boundary that that are this one is the base base is formed by the pubic crest and apex apex of the 
superficial inguinal ring that is formed by the intercrural fibers of external oblique muscle so two sides of this triangular gap this is the lower and lateral margin and this one is the upper and medial margin these two margin or sides are called as crura so this one uh, upper and medial margin is called as superior crush and lower and lateral margin is called as inferior crush this both crura converges above and it will form the apex so you can see here the intercrural fibers of uh, external oblique aponeurosis and you can see from the margins of the superficial inguinal ring there is extension of the is external spermatic fascia so you can see this external spermatic fascia forms the covering over the spermatic cord and testis see this one is the ilio inguinal nerve and this one is the ilio hypogastric nerve uh, this ilio inguinal nerve is the partial content of inguinal canal this ilio inguinal nerve uh, comes out by piercing this internal oblique muscle uh, 2.5 cm medial and below to the anterior superior iliac spine so you can see the piercing of uh, uh, ilio inguinal nerve and it lies superficial to the spermatic cord within the inguinal canal and it comes out through the superficial inguinal ring so you can see this is the uh, ilio inguinal nerve coming out from the superficial inguinal ring and supplies the skin over the external genitalia see this is the internal oblique muscle and we have opened uh, inguinal canal you can see the contents of the inguinal canal that that are spermatic cord and ilio inguinal nerve now see you can see the cremasteric muscle cremaster muscle which lies superolateral to the spermatic cord so this one is the cremaster muscle cremaster muscle is derived from the uh, internal oblique or internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle so along with the cremasteric muscle fascicula you can see the fibro areolar membrane that is that is the cremasteric fascia and they, this cremaster muscle reaches up to the scrotum and it helps in the defensive mechanism of uh, inguinal canal so when it contracts it pulls the testis towards the superficial inguinal ring Uh, as we know the inguinal canal is musculo aponeurotic tunnel which extends from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring so uh, we have opened up the boundaries of deep uh, inguinal canal and uh, you can see here uh, external oblique aponeurosis this one and uh, now directly you can see the fibers of transversus abdominis muscle and beneath the transversus abdominis muscle you can see this oval opening which is the deep inguinal ring this opening is present in the fascia transversalis fascia transversalis lines the inner surface of this transversus abdominis muscle now where is the location of deep inguinal ring which is situated 1. 25 cm above the mid inguinal point so you can see here this is the anterior superior iliac spine this is the pubic symphysis middle of this this one is the uh, mid inguinal point so just above this mid inguinal point you are able to see this one is oval opening within the fascia transversalis is the deep inguinal ring and you can see the boundaries of the deep inguinal ring it is formed by see this is the transversus abdominis muscle so above it is formed by it is related to the fibers of transversus abdominis muscle front and laterally you can see this one 
front and laterally it is related to the fibers of internal oblique muscle and medially you can see the vessels here this one that is the inferior epigastric uh, vessels and inferior epigastric artery which is the branch of external iliac artery so this one is the deep inguinal ring it is actually not an opening but uh, it is the neck of the internal spermatic fascia so you can see this one is the internal spermatic fascia which is derived from fascia transversalis and which forms the covering of spermatic cord now this is the deep inguinal ring from and here you can see the superficial inguinal ring so i have reflected this external oblique uh, aponeurosis and you can see the site of superficial inguinal ring so this is the musculo aponeuretic tunnel which is the inguinal canal so it has boundaries anteriorly this wall is the anterior wall this becomes the roof then below this this boundary is the floor and on the posterior side this is the posterior wall posterior wall and inlet and outlet so contents of inguinal canal in case of male it contains the spermatic cord and in female it contains the round ligament of uterus and ilioinguinal now you can see here which is the partial content of inguinal canal which comes out through the superficial inguinal ring now anterior wall of the inguinal canal you can see it is formed by the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle just in front of external oblique aponeurosis there is the superficial fascia and skin this is superficial fascia and in front of it there will be skin so anterior wall and in the lateral one third of anterior wall again you can see this is the internal oblique muscle so this one lateral one third of inguinal canal it is formed by the fleshy fibers inguinal fibers of internal oblique muscle then roof of the inguinal canal here it is formed by the arch fibers coming from the inguinal ligament uh, of uh, these arch fibers of internal oblique muscle and also this is the transversus abdominis muscle so arch fibers of transversus abdominis muscle coming from the inguinal ligament they are going to form the roof of the inguinal canal so that is the roof now floor you can see the floor of the inguinal canal this whole floor is formed by the grooved upper surface of inguinal ligament so you can see this is the inguinal ligament which is the thickened lower border of external oblique aponeurosis and in the medial part of the inguinal canal the floor is formed by you can see lacunar ligament so this one is the lacunar lig ligament which is the expansion of expansion of inguinal ligament and it is you can see it is triangular in shape so apex is attached to the pubic tubercle base is you can see here over the pectin pubis and uh, uh, and uh, sorry base is uh, forming the medial boundary of femoral ring so floor in the medial part it is formed by the lacunar ligament now posterior wall so here you can see the open inguinal canal and contents so that is the spermatic cord now contents of the inguinal canal enters into the inguinal canal through this deep inguinal ring so uh, uh, these are we have opened up the spermatic cord as it is a male cadaver you are able to see the 
contents that is main content is the vas deferens and testicular vessels so you can see here vas deferens and testicular vessels and ilio inguinal now now posterior wall of the inguinal canal this one is the posterior wall is formed by in whole length it is formed by the fascia transversalis and in front of the fascia transversalis in the medial half of the posterior wall is formed by the conjoint tendon so you can see this one is the conjoint tendon on the medial half of the posterior wall of inguinal canal conjoint tendon is formed by the uh, aponeurosis of internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle and you can see this conjoint tendon is going to attach medially uh, over the uh, pectin pubis and pec uh, pubic crest now in front of the uh, conjoint tendon the posterior wall there is the reflected part of inguinal ligament so you can see this one is the reflected part of the inguinal ligament which is present in the medial one fourth of the posterior wall which extends from the pubic tubercle to the linea alba now here in the posterior wall of the inguinal canal there is presence of one peritoneal triangle that is the uh, in, uh, tra it, it inguinal triangle of hazel beige so boundaries of that triangle you can see here this is the posterior wall so laterally it is bounded by inferior epigastric artery base of that triangle is formed by here you can see by the inguinal ligament and medially there is the lateral border of rectus abdominis muscle this one is the rectus abdominis muscle so this is the triangle that is the triangle of hazelbeck so what is the significance of this triangle whenever there is protrusion of abdominal content through this triangle then it is called as direct hernia so this inferior epigastric artery uh, which act as a guide to identify the deep inguinal ring and if there is protrusion of contents medial to this inferior epigastric artery through this triangle then it is called as direct hernia and if the contents enter through this deep inguinal ring and lateral to this inferior epigastric artery then it is called as indirect hernia